Brendan Smith, who is 30 seconds to introduce. Um, thank you, Leskin Corley. Minister, I gathered from a presentation by Waterways Ireland at a, at a meeting of the, good, of the Committee on the Implementation of the Good Friday Agreement that there is a need to expand their capital budget. Thankfully, there is, there is huge usage of the waterway facilities and there is a need for ongoing maintenance and also improvement of facilities that are being used and that attract great numbers of visitors to our country. I understand that the budget last year for capital programmes for, um, was 7.8 million and 2.6 million of that was from Waterways Ireland's own resources. It's a small capital budget for such a vast area of state property. So, Minister, I think there's an urgent need to, up, to increase the capital funding available and ensure that necessary maintenance and upgrading of facilities are carried out to ensure that we continue to have our waterways as a prime tourism attraction. Thank you, Ashton Corley. Thank you, Deputy. Uh, waterways Ireland is responsible for the management, maintenance, development and restoration of approximately 1,000 kilometres of the inland navigable waterway system throughout the island, principally for recreational purposes, including the Lower Ban navigation, the Urn system, the Shannon Urn waterway, the Shannon navigation, the Grand Canal, the Royal Canal and the Barrow navigation. And Waterways Ireland is co-funded uh, by my department and the Department for Infrastructure in Northern Ireland. The current expenditure of the body is funded 85% by my department and 15% by the Department for Infrastructure, which reflects the distribution of the navigable waterways in each jurisdiction. And capital expenditure is funded 100% in the jurisdiction in which the capital works are carried out. And in addition to this, development work has been sustained through attracting third-part investment from a wide range of sources. And Waterways Ireland work programmes are critical to providing a safe and high quality recreational environment for the public, while also preserving the industrial and environmental heritage of the waterways for future generations. And these challenges must be balanced with its objective of increasing recreational activity across all of our waterways. And the estimates for 2019 have provided an allo allocation of 25,107, sorry, 25,117,000 for Waterways Ireland, made up of 20,737,000 in current funding and 4,380,000 in capital funding. And this is an overall increase of 1 million on the original 2018 allocation, with capital funding increased by 800,000. So additional funding from Waterways Ireland in 2019 is not contemplated, Deputy, by the estimates process, and it will like all other agencies under my remit, need to live within its capital oh allocation. Uh, Deputy Smith is one minute. Uh, Minister, I gathered from previous reply that the capital funding in 2018 was £5.18 million directly from your department and then Waterways Ireland own funding. You mentioned a, fun a funding figure for 2019 of £4 million. And I don't know how an increase has come about. Are you, are you talking about Waterways Ireland drawing down funding from other programmes? And perhaps you could clarify that. Minister, can you also confirm that the capital works that were promised to in regard to the provision of moorings at Castle Saunderson with the restoration of part of the Ulster Canal, that those works will be carried out this year? Minister, I take the Shannon Erdon Waterway. It's most of 30 years since that waterway was made navigable. And by definition, um, those facilities have been used extensively, thankfully, with the huge amount of tourists that it, it has brought to the Fermanagh, Cavan, Leitrim area, in particular, and on to Roscommon as well, and Longford. Um, I, I believe that there is a need to upgrade facilities there, and perhaps you could indicate to the House if there are particular programmes that will benefit the Erdon Shannon waterway and ensure that it continues to be the major attraction that it has been over most of the past 30 years. Minister. Thank you. One Thank you, Deputy. Uh, the figures that I have given you, Deputy, are the correct figures in terms of capital and in terms of current funding. Um, you mentioned uh, the Ulster Canal. In, in July 2007, the North South Ministerial Council agreed to a proposal to restore the section of the Ulster Canal from the Upper Loch Urn to Clonus, and planning approvals for the project have been secured from the relevant, relevant authorities in two uh, jurisdictions. So there was government approval to restore a 2.5 kilometre stretch of the Ulster Canal from the Upper Loch Urn 
to the International Scout Centre at Castle Saunderson, which you mentioned near Bell Turbot in County Cavan, which was secured on the 24th of February 2015. So work to extend navigation on the Ulster Canal from Upper Loch Lern to uh, Castle Saunderson was completed in December 2018 with a bypass canal channel and a new bridge at Derry Kerrib. An installation of moorings at Castle Saunderson has been completed to enable its use as a destination for boats using the newly opened uh, navigation from the Urn to Castle Saunderson. And to date, over three million has been set, spent on the entire Ulster Canal project. Thank you. An expenditure of one uh, million and thirteen complete, complete this portion nice. of the navigation in 2018. Final, final supplementary. Um, thank you, Alaskan Cora. Minister, again, I go back to the point that, that, that we welcome the, the usage of the facilities, and I think there is a need for, for a comprehensive capital uh, programme to ensure that those facilities remain uh, up to standard to continue to attract visitors. And Minister, I would appeal to you again to have Waterways Ireland revisit the proposal that we discussed in this House previously in regard to the possibility of having the Erden Med navigable from Beltorba to Gillick. Killikeen and Killishandra. It would be a major project, but I think it's one, if there was an indication given by you and your department and Waterways Ireland that some progress can be made in the planning of that project, it would be a very worthwhile development. Thank you, Alaskan Gorla. Uh, two, two very quick ones. Uh, we saw uh, during the week the story on RTE about the pollution. Um, I don't know whether you had any communications with Waterways Ireland, the pollution by ESB, and kind of to, to ensure that the ESB uh, funds any uh, works that are required to undo the damage that they've done. And sec secondly, uh, uh, in relation to the Grand Canal, it's a question I've asked previous ministers, will they raise with Irish, or Irish Waterways uh, why no enhancement works have been carried out on the canal from Harold's Cross up to Black Horse? Uh, kind of all the rest of the areas, uh, it, 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 it is fabulous what they've done, but that area there, there's no, no work has been carried out in the paths, tow paths, no moorings, um, and there is a, a need for that to address. Is it because um, it goes through mainly a working class area, or is it just that it's a, a forgotten piece of the canal? I just want to ask the Minister if uh, Waterways Ireland or, and or the ESB have advised her of these reports of pollution of both the Grand and the Royal Canal uh, that were carried in all of the national newspapers recently. Uh, could she actually share what information she has received uh, as the Minister with overall responsibility? I think the issue of pollution is really concerning in terms of the canals in Dublin, which are as they are, as the previ previous speaker has said, in terms of the north and the border area. There are enormous amenity resources. And can I also ask as well, does the Minister have a policy in terms of Waterways Ireland that when they're undertaking any initiatives in conjunction, in conjunction with local authorities, that they would advise local residents of what the proposals are, particularly in terms of protecting the wildlife corridors that exist along the canals. Thank you, Deputy Minister, for replying. Thank you. Um, Deputy Smith, uh, first of all, um, <clears throat> just you mentioned about um, Lock, Locketer, I think, and um, some, of, some of the other works that you'd like done. I mean, to this end, I know Waterways Ireland has met with the Chief Executive um, of Cavan County Council and the elected representatives there, um, and, and also. This year, that was back in 2017, but also this year in the context of the Ulster, Ulster Canal Advisory Forum, um, I note the comments of Deputy O'Snudig and Deputy Burton in relation to pollution, and I can come back to you with a full report. I don't have a report here to hand in relation to that, but I do know that Waterways Ireland, one of their main priorities is the maintenance um, of canals um, and to deliver a pr prioritised uh, management and maintenance programme for the waterways, um, concentrating available resources on their, their greatest area um, of use and benefit. And they also want to increase the use of inland navigations, creating and promoting recreational opportunities for local communities and visitors, and delivering economic, social uh, and health benefits. Uh, I can also come back to uh, Deputy O'Snody in relation to the Harold's Cross um, uh, moorings there that you mentioned, and 
Deputy Burton, just in relation to uh, to residents and their views, um, usually uh, public consultations are undertaken, but I can certainly bring back your concerns to Waterways Ireland and what oh you say. Thank you. Uh,